guys, this is going to be a whispered ramble and commentary type thing over gameplay of Silent Hill. I will continue this because it's a pretty short game and also I really like playing it. So watch out for part two and as I make it I'll create a playlist so if you're enjoying it you can just watch all the way through. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description for a fundraiser. We give food, hygiene supplies, essentials, literature, and we hold reading groups with people who need it, um, particularly those affected by the opioid crisis. All the money goes directly to things for the people, so please check that out. Alright, the video starts now. There are violent and disturbing images in this game, and we are going to look at all of them. The fear of blood tends to create fear for the flesh. Going to watch a bit of this beautiful opening cinematic. Dahlia seeing something, I don't know what, and then I, I think that's Dahlia's house. Oh no. And there we have the inciting event. this new game. Harry Mason has just crashed his car after swerving out of the way, trying not to hit a little girl he saw on the road. He looks over to find his daughter is not in the vehicle with him. And he stands up. Go find her. I love this loading cinematic with the blur effect and Harry running. Cheryl, where could you be? It's strange. It's quiet. Too quiet. This place is like a ghost town. Cheryl.
What's going on here? Ah, and then this happens. Oh, we were so scared. I was like, I was six years old and this game scared me. Just this part scared me so much. I got this morbid curiosity. I was like, I want to experience that thrill, that feeling again. And I, that's part of like how I just ended up loving horror, I think. What a unique experience this is. It's just as magical as like fairy tales, but it hits closer to home, I think. all a dream or was it
the most quoted. It's just the corniest piece of dialogue in this game, possibly. This is not a dream. What's happening to this place? So the radio emits static when monsters are nearby. I guess I'll check that alley again. Very bold of him, because what if the same exact thing happens? What if he had to get it killed by zombie children again? They're not zombies, but you know, demons, whatever. So yeah, one of the concepts of the first three Silent Hill games is that you get a radio that emits static when monsters are nearby, and it's a cool thing. And here's another one of the concepts. The roads are destroyed and you can't get through. Oh, looks like I had headed in the wrong direction. This game, I think, um, I can't decide if it's my favorite Silent Hill game. This or, or two. Maybe even three, but there are definitely things about this game that are better than the others. Oh, one of them is the sound design. Um, you could uh, you could say the others have better sound design, but like this one has again that graphical, um, that PlayStation One quality. Another thing. I guess graphics and sound, it's the same thing. Like, it just has this otherworldliness. This grimness and oddness. He doesn't even have anything to say about the bloody mess. Back into the alley we go. Personally, don't. I think this game. 
as some of the weakest monsters, but uh, like in the next few games, the monster design, I don't know, I think um, they really like came into their own as far as the monster design went in the monsters doghouse. That's just telling me where to go. The monsters um, take on the sort of brownish, bloody color palette that like the other world in this game has. Um, and they just become like cadaverous and I don't know, sexualized and weird and very interesting. This game, they're a little more typical. You know, you've got like a dog, a pterodactyl, child thing with a knife, um, but in this game, the nurses are my favorite of the whole series, they're so creepy, and they run, which, uh, they've just got this murderousness to them, whereas the, the more recognizable, like, bubblehead nurses from the second and third games, um, they're a little different. So, a dog's head. Someone that's absolutely depraved. Someone that's playing basketball with a dog's head. Ew. figure out this puzzle, like you'd have to go to the house and find this map, but I already know where the keys are, so I'm just gonna save some time and get that out of the way. Wizard of Oz characters, there's the Scarecrow, the Lion, and the Woodsman, or whatever. I think in the movie it's a Tin Man, I don't know. Silent Hill's Resort Town, so you've got these like boat looking things. If I don't stop taking L's, I'm gonna delete my YouTube channel. What a clown I am. I think that I, I beat this game for the first time when I was like seven. In fact, I beat it with my aunt watching. Oh. Me and her used to team up on video games. Um, Cause, so I think children have better reflexes than adults and I think that's true because like I used I could like get through this game without getting hit once when I was younger and now like I'm getting my butt kicked as you can see um but yeah so she'd have me like do some of the stuff I think probably because I was just like better at running and fighting. She would say that I was doing her grunt work. But I beat it for the first time. I was seven. And the puzzles, the puzzles are so interesting and it was so satisfying to try and figure out some of the puzzles to get to the end. She had had to go to um, the library because this was the 90s. 90s, this is actually 2000, uh, around the year 2000. But they didn't have uh, internet in the house, so she had to go to the library and write down puzzle solutions on a piece of paper. And she went and did that so that we didn't have to like suffer through most of the puzzles. But, um, I did still have to figure some of them out. There's this one at the end 
door, you have to get these shapes. To enter in a passcode to a door, and to get them, you have to use a, a, a film camera to take a photograph of some portraits. And for some reason, taking the picture causes the shapes to be revealed. And I, I just remember figuring that out. I was like, um, I don't know, I remember being like, I don't know what to do, but like, why don't I try using a camera on these pictures, I guess, and even at that age, I was like, it's kind of silly, but give it a try, and it worked, and, um, that's always, like, one of the biggest, one of the most fun parts of survival horror games is figuring out the puzzles. You just get that satisfaction, like, oh yeah, I did that. So if I had, um, followed the clues, I would have found this map for Eclipse. Then he marked down on the map. Um, Key of Lion, Key of Woodman, Key of Scarecrow. And then and 
this one. So speaking of the puzzles, first let me check this out. More Ronaldo Gordon. This must be the list of teachers. Speaking of puzzles, this is um, an example of the beauty of some of these riddles in this game. It's written in blood. Ten o'clock. Alchemy Laboratory. Gold in an old man's ball. The future hidden in his fist. Exchange for sage's water. It's written in blood. Twelve o'clock. A place with songs and sound. A silver guidepost is untapped and lost tongues, awakening at the ordained order. Five o'clock, darkness that brings the choking heat. Flames render the silence, awakening the hungry beast. Open time's door to beck and pray. I, when I first um, saw that when I was like six, it was darkness that brings the choking heat. It's just such an amazing line and it stuck with me. I've like never forgotten that line. I think about it sometimes. A picture of a door. I don't know who drew it, but it is certainly in bad taste. And then also, that's this game is where I learned that uh, idiom in bad taste. Yeah, isn't that cool? It was um, it was just such a, an influence on my creativity have played this game when I was young. I don't encourage people to like show things to their children that are age inappropriate. Definitely not. Maybe I probably saw some things that I was too young to see when I was a kid, but um, you know, just things like like Silent Hill didn't feel pandering the way that a lot of children's stuff does. And, you know, I don't know, I was just a kid, but I was able to tell when a book or something was, like, trying to, like, convey a moral to me, like it was doing that with express purpose, with some pro-social message. Obviously, that's the right thing to do in creating kid stuff, but I don't know, I was, um, I could just tell when I was being pandered to. And things like Silent Hill were just as magical as the uh, other fiction I liked. But they weren't, I don't know, they were honest. They were interesting. They weren't worrying about what they made me think or what they were teaching me. You should be worried about those things, obviously, when it comes to children, but just that's how it affected my perception. Whatever, I'm not gonna get philosophical about it. You know what I'm saying? I guess that, I've, I've said this before, but that was overall what I like about horror, was just that, um, Wait. Yeah, I believe, I, I'm capturing sound, I believe, and I do believe that. You can hear like a child. Oh my God, there's a second one. There you go, you saw me get scared. 
this, so it's really scary running into the monsters because you don't hear them coming. Alright, I'm gonna scare myself more and go into these stupid bathrooms. Oh, okay. Better just be one in here. This is the one with the crying girl. So now that I have that first medallion, the alchemist puzzle, gold in an old man's palm, I can go. Golden Sun. And then head back inside. with songs and sound. Past this godforsaken mumbler is what those monsters are called, mumblers. It's unlocked.
on here. There's something thumping. Do I dare open the locker? Yes, I do. sort of sadistic frights. That game has a pretty cool, um, has a pretty mature horror sensibility, but there's also, like, just sadistic thrills thrown in, like, like that stupid dog head in that, um, uh, basketball court. Uh, I don't know. Just adds, it just, I don't know, it just makes me respect the horror more. The third game is the best for those, like, devilish frights, because, like, the third game obviously is very, um, atmospheric and what have you, but there's also just a lot of, like, jump frights to the point that it starts feeling like mean and calculated. I mean, which it is. The place is swarming with monsters now. A silver moon. stopped at five o'clock. Oh, I thought I just had to use those medallions. I don't want to get my stuff wrecked by those monsters. Well, uh, what the heck then? I forgot. I need to go to the boiler room. sound. 
unlocked. Okay. Oh, I'm so tired of these things. I'm inside the clock tower. Sound of the sirens. There's like bottles on the floor. There's a car wash outside, and it just made a very loud noise, so I had to take a break. Where am I? The sound, uh, the song at this part of the soundtrack is so amazing. It's metal as heck. It's scary. I don't remember this being here before. Big symbol. Now. are just cockroaches. Yeah, get away from me. My, um, my friend Emmett Christmas got me a gift where he found that item, that picture card on Etsy. Someone had made it, and that was his Christmas gift to me. It was really sick. It was an amazing choice. And a cool decoration. just, uh, this is so unique and fascinating. This other world they've created, this vision of hell. I take it for granted how, how what, a, what a fascinating idea they had in creating this other world. It's like, it's just full of death and hell and rust and metal and corpses. Um, it's, uh, this game is also where I, I learned the word alternate because my aunt, you know, there's an alternate world that you go into in this game. And I learned alternate just means other or different.
There's these cages hanging over the abyss. I um I want to know like what if there if any of the other other world is like a direct reference to any like mythology or anything. Obviously there's like the abyss. like ceremonial long corpses. Oh, and if you get to this, see, that painting that was in poor taste. Well, now it's a reality. And, um, that picture be that becomes a key to that door. so far have not been very successful um, relative to my other videos. I'm not sure what reasons there are that make one thing more or less successful, but I'm not quite sure what people are looking for in ASMR What's Plays. Like, having an overlay of my face I don't think is super important to people because they're here for the voice. So please let me know, like, <clears throat> what you do and don't like. Oh, this part. The phone rings. Daddy, help me. Daddy, where are you? Cheryl's voice. I know it. Where is she? Cheryl. And uh, we do need to go to the rooftop at some point. But first, we need a rubber ball. Reserve key. There we go. That's the 
that's how we do it. No time to backtrack. These cockroaches are very annoying. Get away. Please don't hurt me, just let me run. so good at catching my feet. I get so bored by like fighting everything that I just try to run and my brain is too dull to uh, adequately avoid these creatures attacks. useful books. Here's another one of those fairy tale references I was telling you about. Hearing this, the hunter armed with bow and arrow said, I will kill the lizard. But upon meeting his opponent, he held back, taunting was afraid of a reptile. At this, the furious lizard hissed, I'll swallow you up in a single bite. Then the huge creature attacked, jaws opened wide. This was what the man wanted. Calmly drawing his bow, he shot into the lizard's gaping mouth. Effortlessly, the arrow flew piercing the defenseless maw, and the lizard fell down dead. This is from an old fairy tale. I remember reading it as a kid. Now that fairy tale becomes a clue as to how to beat the first boss, which is coming up here pretty soon. very clever. The classroom is locked, it appears. I can unlock this door now. I hope that no mumblers have shown up.
try to appreciate the environments with that symbol everywhere. The key went down the drain. Um, make sure I'm in good health. I do need to head to the restrooms. The virtual restrooms to grab the shotgun. Soon. All right. Let's hope I can get by this towel. Jinxed it. Uh, come on. Whew. Okay. room key. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, didn't I? Did I not unlock this door? What a pain. What, what idiocy and what idiocy and lunacy of me to not do that. I'm going to lose it. figured out how to avoid their very obvious attacks. If you're a gamer, leave me alone. I don't need your judgment. my aunt saw with that on the floor and she was like what is that that's a carrot and she was like serious like she thought it was gross that it was a carrot the reveal a hanging body why would somebody Leonard Ryan the monster lurks. I'm not sure what Leonard Ryan refers to, to be completely honest. Also, this girl's bathroom is a magic portal. You go in and out of it, and I think so. And bam, you're on the second floor. So now I can go into the second floor boy's room. There are bullets and shotgun shells. I really, really hope that my roommate's noise is not being captured in here. They're being very noisy, but... This mic I'm using um, tends to keep out a lot of distant noise. It's unlocked. Okay, now I gotta go to the second floor. Wait, no, what I'm gonna do... So I can get through more quickly. That classroom I need to go to. On floor two. Hopefully without getting wrecked. Yes, I finally avoided. Okay. I um had meant to keep a ramble going. But I'm so freaking freaked out. 
someone the key to my gay garden. 
guys, you can just kind of wander around the school now. It's daytime. I've never even tried doing this. It's weird. I bet you can't go anywhere. Also, I'm going to re-equip my handgun. Thanks for...